Bristol, 1990s. Wild Bunch, Massive Attack, Portishead, Tricky Banksy, melting pot of influences created by the children of the Windrush generation, the sound system generation, new expressions in art, music, and ideologies of autonomy, anarchy, play and freedom, graffiti writers, travelers, subculture journalists, DJs, musicians, producers, anarchists, squatters, ravers, the get up and DIY generation that would power new forms in the UK and European urban culture. The freedom to create, desire to break the rules, form collectives, to collapse and merge forms, to forge new ideas and all the time challenge the power. If that sounds positively utopic, then be prepared for the elbow that knocks the needle screeching across the grooves because brand new, your retro holds a darkness in its heart. A skunk-induced bipolar paranoia, a black man in a dress with smudged porn makeup, spitting lyrics about dysfunctional relationships in a red-lit dank basement on the edge of a council estate, a prescient game changer, a cultural singularity, a point from which we'd now have to choose brand new or retro. Are you brand new or retro? Graffiti is the beginning. It came to Europe through the music, the clash, blondie, buffalo gals. It came to Europe through the films, the images of the trains, train yards, underground. The images sampled and interpreted in our own way became basement experiment, enlightenment, sentiment, rudiment, entertainment, advertisement, and glossy establishment. Mere moment, the monument. Then, just ghost. Graffiti was a beginning with trains, trips, war names, yards, fences, crowbars, and the bag with cans. Through the scars you see bars. Through the bars you see scars. Results of my rage. Every writer will understand this language. It's merely a code. Spray cans in a bag and taking no as an invitation. It's a tribute and a sentiment to the beginning of trains, trips, yards, war names. War names. What about the war names when the war is not with the system? It is not about your name anymore. 
yet about someone else, about collective memory affected by the Civil War, when each bullet relates to everyone, and the artist is the one who reminds about it. It is political, yet it's not a requiem, like dancing curtains on the Lebanese Tower of the Wind celebrating the life of abandoned place. This effort, made towards the wall, helps to carve the moment and let go the memories. Climate breakdown. Crisis. Emergency. Norway issues several new oil licenses. The oil companies will now be allowed to drill closer than ever before to the protected Svalbard zone, as well as the nature reserve of the Bear Island. The drilling will be a major threat to the nature in the high north. And the safety tape here is not to isolate you from the danger, but to show the rise of the sea level in 80 years. RCP 8.5. Are you seeing the future now? Or is it business as usual? The dread of the past and fear of the future. What market wants? A clean, well-lighted white wall, golden frame with a classic painting, artist's signature as authentication of the price? But what if artists will ask the fellow to vandalize his own work, unsign the painting? Will it worth the same? Or without the signature, it'll just become a still life painting, depicting the bowl of wasted food found by the artist in the city's garbage bin. But this is not what the art market actually wants you to buy. Vandalize the system. Rubbish is a hidden thing. We make sure we have a collection service and everything's fine. When there's a strike and garbage stays on the street, suddenly it's a horrible place to live. We're making a horrible place to live anyway, but the fact that it is hidden and you don't see it makes you think the other it's way. Still a problem there. Just want to remind people what the fuck is going on. We know, yes, we it's know. It's my ego on fantastic, but still you're fucking with my plastic. The future is genderless, but the present is female. This image was originally born with a woman standing above Duchamp's urinal. She prefers the standing position above the men's art. She's every woman and no one in particular, representing the time for the women to stand up above the patriarchy. Personal is political as a photo of the empty bed on billboard in Manhattan erases the boundaries between private and public. A small flower on the street becomes a statement. It marks the sites of homophobia, reminds us about harmful consequences of the words. It makes a private case public in order to tackle the hate. I take a small piece, make it breathe. It takes a second to wreck it. Brand new, your retro. It is when an old masterpiece is sampled, remastered and brought to new life. Like the coastal landscape painted by Lars Herdervig in 1855, escaping museum walls and reborn in the tunnels. Brand new, your retro. Your retro. Brand new.
When you walk into the artist's studio, it is full of traces of the old works. Paint splatters, lines, stains, faintly visible outlines. You're trying to imagine the artwork in accordance to remaining traces. Rome. Brown. Violet. Only later you understand that the artwork inside doesn't exist at all. Because in this case, the artist focused on what is outside the ephemeral painting. As a research on something made with merely conscious gesture. Reverse stencil. Painting in the opposite way. Mechanical. I'm super natty. Beach is beneath the paving stones, beneath the paving stones on the Rive Gauche, 1968, a protest strike, resistance, revolution are in the DNA of culture, student workers, riots, letterism movement, situationist international, punk, lead you to Bristol 1990, and the black man in a dress with smudged porn makeup spitting lyrics about dysfunctional relationships in a red-lit, dank basement on the edge of a council estate. 